Salutations, everybody. It's Maddie here. The year is 2020. We're still talking about Fallout 3. Hopefully, one day we can will that remaster or that Switch port into existence. But until that time, this guy back here, he keeps forcing me to talk about it. I mean, look at his face. Hold on. You're telling me you're going to say no to this guy? Come on. That's a, that's a ferocious face right there, okay? I got to listen to him. He's my boss. So anyway, you might be wondering why we're talking about Fallout 3 all of a sudden, especially the week that the PlayStation 5 is going to be revealed. Why are we going back to such an old RPG? Well, this last Friday, I started up my first ever YouTube live stream. We did Fallout 3, and it was an amazing time. For those of you who want to join every single Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be live. I just wanted a place I could directly interact with you guys. It went extremely well like i can't speak positively enough about how amazing that stream was we had over 700 concurrent viewers it was such a good time just reminiscing on how great fallout 3 was but as i played it more and more and i did do a 2020 review earlier this year which i'll have linked in the description down below if you guys do want to go ahead and give it a look but when it came to fallout 3 i realized more and more as i've returned to it this year that this is a game that's so different from what bethesda game studios does nowadays that's not even the obvious things like fallout 76 obviously being an online game of course that's completely different at the very core of that title compared to some something like Skyrim or Fallout 3, but I'm talking design-wise. When you compare Fallout 3 to even Fallout 4, just the approach, the way Bethesda handled things, their preference on certain things, it's completely different. And so I just wanted to go ahead and acknowledge some things that I think Bethesda should take a look at for when making Starfield or Elder Scrolls 6. Maybe it's too late, maybe it's a really dated conversation or a waste of time, but I still think it's a worthwhile discussion and uh, yeah, we're trying to just kill time until the PS5 is revealed and we can talk about something a little more modern. What I noticed while I was streaming the game is how the content really introduces you to the game world. For a lot of people, myself included, and a lot of people just like to talk down on people because of this, but Fallout 3 was my first ever Fallout game. Went back and played 1 and 2, it doesn't matter. Fallout 3 is your first game, you are a noob. But anyway, I really appreciate how Bethesda introduces the content to you. And I'm not even talking about the introduction of the game. Of course, Fallout 3's intro section, legendary. A lot of people like to talk about it positively, myself included. But when it comes to what I'm talking about, I'm thinking of the Wasteland Survival Guide. Now, everyone hates my girl Moira Brown, but look, underrated girl, underrated. Great character in Fallout 3. I'll go ahead and die on that sword. Don't mind if I do. But Wasteland Survival Guide, in my opinion, is such a well done quest because it brings you into every little corner of the world and actually encourages the player to learn more about where Fallout 3 is set and what's happening here while also rewarding you with tons of survival items, magazines, healing items, weapons, all that stuff. So you familiarize yourself with all the game world and the mechanics at the same time as exploring and of course it's Fallout 3 so going from point A to point B it's not that simple you're going to get distracted. That brings me to another thing that I think Bethesda really needs to take a look at with their design is not only having interesting quests bring you around the world, but also those dynamic encounters that happen. Now we saw that a lot in of course Skyrim, but when it came to something like Fallout 4, there wasn't many times that something really significant approached me and it brought about this whole entire quest I was not expecting. I think of say those where I'm outside the super duper mart and all of a sudden I'm approached by Brian Wilkes. Suddenly while I'm going to do the next part of the Wasteland Survival Guide quest, I also have those which involves this investigation on ants in the Fallout universe. And I just don't think that a lot of Bethesda Game Studios games nowadays offer that option of while you're going from point A to point B, there are significant things that are going to stop you in your tracks and pull you off the beaten path. It's just a core in the design of those games where it's not doing the, what I like to call kind of like the Ubisoft, always throwing something at you every 15 seconds and it's just a point of interest or like someone harassing you on the side of the road with like some type of like AK-47 on ATV. I'm talking about you Far Cry if you couldn't tell, but they've really fallen off of that since Skyrim technically, but I think Fallout 3 was their best example of that because Fallout 3 is a big game, but it's not this humongous gargantuan experience where it's digestible. And so that's one thing I think Bethesda could really learn from Fallout 3. The other is how HUD is handled. I think one of the best things about Fallout 3, and I've really appreciated game universes that can keep their HUD within the game world. As someone who one day wants to make their own RPG, I look at how Fallout 3 handles it, where you're playing 
most of us, from a first person perspective. And when you want to go ahead and change your equipment, heal yourself, bringing up the Pip Boy, it's so different from just pausing your game and managing from a menu. Having your actual game world connected to your menu and your character management, it still stops the game, but it doesn't mentally pull you out of things, even ever so slightly, like so many others do. And so I just appreciate so much more of these games that keep you engaged constantly. Because with Fallout 3 and New Vegas, it's grounded in the world, it makes sense, but it works incredibly well. And so like I said, I just have a deeper appreciation for that. It's just a magical thing to have all of your character management in this in-world device that's on your wrist. I always, always thought it was cool just from a actual aesthetic point of view, but now design-wise, it's something that I hope Bethesda can figure out for their future games. More likely Starfield, I don't know how Elder Scrolls could have something in-universe that would let you manage your character, but Starfield, given that that's going to be like a sci-fi adventure game, I would say that they should try to figure something out HUD-wise that can let you stay in that game world while managing your character. It's a little thing, is it mandatory? Probably not, but I think it really, once again, is one of those little things that helps Fallout 3 out and makes it such a memorable experience. Now, I mentioned the point A to point B. We're going to go back to that a little bit here. I just didn't want to beat you guys over the head with it. But there are also a lot of skirmishes and unmarked locations in Fallout 3. Worthwhile ones that, once again, are going to be between those major areas on the map. And so, for example, in my trip from Megaton to Rivet City, I encountered a ton of different enemies. I found a bunch of little outposts with ammo, healing items, maybe some magazines. And that type of stuff, once again, are those intermittent things that keep you engaged. It's that perfect balancing of big quests coming your way, little quests coming your way, and just the occasional skirmish or looting. And so it's not like Fallout 4 where it's just shoot and loot and constantly being bombarded. What I like about Fallout 3 is it has a good pacing, right? They don't have everything in the game world rushing at you for your attention. It trusts that the player will explore and discover it for itself. So once again, just at the core of Fallout 3 is this very patient design, something that you don't see nowadays in BGS games, not online or not. And I, I would say even Skyrim doesn't really trust you at times to explore because you always have that courier sprinting to you, coming to you, telling you about the newest quest you have. Nothing wrong with it because Skyrim's world is gigantic. There's hundreds and hundreds of hours that you can spend in that world compared to Fallout 3. So at least it's a little more understandable. But I like how with the way Fallout 3's world is structured, it works a lot better with how it's designed. With that in mind, there's also a atmosphere that's very strange and unique to Fallout 3 that Bethesda just hasn't nailed since. You see, when they took over the Fallout license and they made 3, in my opinion, going back to 1 and 2 and then seeing 3, I felt like Bethesda properly understood what Fallout was. But when you look at 4, I can see a little bit of that. In 76, I thought the world itself was cool, but I felt like when you make Fallout online, like it or not, right, that has nothing to do with it, I feel like that's where you start to sort of miss what Fallout exactly is. And so when I'm playing Fallout 3, you meet Dukov, right? And there's just no one like Dukov in Fallout 4. There's this just true sense of wackiness, yet remaining grounded in reality, right? Because it's such a believable world with its lore, but yet you're running around with a plasma rifle shooting robots out of the sky. It's like, okay, well, is it realistic or is it not? But then you just have this perfect blending of dark humor, wackiness, yet there's this something about it that's so believable, and I think it's what's at the heart of the universe, which is its lore. And I feel like a lot of the future games sort of sidestep that once again to, in the case of Fallout 4 at least, take itself a lot more seriously. Like, Fallout 4 wasn't a funny game. <laughs> you know, there were sarcastic options here or there, but Fallout 4... I don't think was as well written and weird and wacky as say Fallout 3. So once again, I, I think this was Bethesda sort of forgetting what made Fallout Fallout. Like there was that initial excitement of Fallout 3. Like we got this license. We've always wanted this license. We got to make something really special out of this. And then you get complacent because it's, it's, it's something you're familiar with in Fallout 4. And then with Fallout 76, I think they go, this is ours. We can do whatever we want with it because they've got ownership of it for so long. So it's just interesting to see how it developed from what was the the nucleus of its its growth in my opinion uh some will argue new vegas i think fallout 3 was really at the the core of what made this series incredibly relevant to the mainstream crowd but tailing on that atmosphere is also the music now someone in the chat mentioned this and it was such an excellent point that with or without the music the game has a certain vibe to it right when you're listening to galaxy news radio 
the game has a totally different feel. You know, you're kind of like moving around your seat a little bit, just enjoying yourself. You're like, man, what game could you shoot Super Mutants and listen to 50s music? This is so weird, but it works so, so stinking well. And then you look at when you're playing without the music, which I had to do on stream, because obviously YouTube will like absolutely end my career if I play 50s music <laughs> over the radio. So it's just the ambient music. And there it's got a little bit more of a grim tone, but it's not overkill because like I mentioned with Dukov, great example, he's that kind of step up where you're like, this guy's just weird, man. Like, what's going on here? Why, why is this guy out in the middle of the wasteland having, like, parties and stuff? This is just so strange. So there's just that balance there, that design. And I think a lot of it just boils down to the, the core content being diversified, allowing the player to discover it, having certain things come their way. And when they do come their way, it's important. The little skirmishes and dynamic unmarked locations that are on the map. And there's just a lot that goes into it that I believe... If Bethesda went back and looked at Fallout 3 and what they did to make this game, I'm not saying they have to copy it, but just look at some of the notes, uh, the beats, the world beats of what made Fallout 3 Fallout 3. I, I think they could carry some of that philosophy in their design into future titles, and it would work exceptionally well. But this has just been a little bit of a ramble, I guess, at the end of the day, and I don't know if anyone really agrees with me i know a lot of people like fallout 3 but maybe they just like fallout 3 and wanted to see bethesda carry the torch forward in other ways but that's what the comment section is for so i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below big thank you to all the patrons who continue to absolutely kill it with the support over there we also have memberships open thank you to everyone who's joined there appreciate each and every single one of you and i'll talk with you guys soon stay sexy stay active i love you all peace